Hi everyone. In this lab, we are going to snip username and password using Wireshark. This is going to be a little bit long video. I want to demonstrate how you can do this from the scratch. Please bear with me. We'll do each and every step one by one, step by step. Then you can have better understanding how we can do that. Before we start, we need to have few tools. First, you need to have VMware, VMware Workstation, VMware Player, or Oracle Virtual Box. This is for your hypervisor. We are going to install Windows 10 on top of that, as well as Linux Distro. Here, I'm going to use the Ubuntu, and you need to have Wireshark. We are going to snip the username and password using Wireshark and Putty to access the terminals and access the other machines. Idea is this demonstration is this is you can take as a project. You can document these details. You can put it on your own portfolio. You can upload this into GitHub. You can use this as a small project which you have done in Cyber World, as well as you can add this into your resume. Without further ado, let's get started. First, we need to download these tools. I am not going to download the um, Oracle Virtual Box because I have already downloaded and installed that in my laptop. We'll see how we can download the Windows 10 or 11 as well as Ubuntu, Wireshark, and Putty. First, we'll download the Windows 10. Windows 10 is available in Microsoft website, which is free. If you want to use Windows 11, feel free to use it. You can download both the ISOs from Microsoft Evaluation Center. If you Google like Microsoft Evaluation Center, you can definitely find this or else I will write down all the links in the description. This is the Microsoft Evaluation Center. If you go to the Windows, you can download Windows 11 Enterprise, 10 Enterprise, as well as Windows Service if you want to build a lab with the Windows Service. In this example, I'm going to download Windows 10 Enterprise, which is easy for me to do. And I'm just head that download the ISO Enterprise button and you have to fill this form which is real don't need to fill your real details you can do anything here test this is us wherever you live in some number set and download oh this is required we'll see us and after that you will have this window here i'm going to use the 64-bit version with the iso enterprise download click 64-bit edition and it will download to your computer while it's downloading let's go to the Ubuntu version. Here I'm going to use Ubuntu 22.04 version, which is kind of stable and which is easy to handle. If you Google like Ubuntu 22.04, you can easily find this page. You can land to this page. Here I'm going to use the desktop image. If you're happy to use the server install image, yes, you can do that. But here I'm going to use the 64-bit version over here. I will click this and I will download this image as well in the same time. Once all downloaded, then we can start our lab. We'll just wait until download and let's meet again. Okay, my images files are ready. ISO files. This is my Windows 10 and this is my Ubuntu iso file i will rename this because it's easy for us to identify yes what we are going to do now is we are going to install windows 10 and ubuntu and configure the network settings in virtualbox to communicate in between those two and will perform the lab after that i'm going to hit new and i will rename this as windows 10 i'll do windows 10 first and i will install this in specific location for i am going to select my desktop and windows 10 this version next uh, you can give any username what we give we'll do red password you can see my password password and hostname also windows 10 we will set this as home lab dot local and click next i will stick with the 2 gb ram and if you're happy you can give two cpus 50 gb is fine for me you can adjust 
as you want and that's it hit the finish button and it will prepare the vm for you we can do the same for the ubuntu machine and while this is installing we can do the ubuntu machine as well again i'm going to hit new ubuntu and i'm going to install into the default location and i'm going to browse this select my ubuntu here and click next we will skip this one yes skip this one again stick with 2 gb 2 cpus for me 25 gb is enough for this tutorial i will leave as it is click next looks good for me and finish and uh, while this is installing we'll do this one as well but before that i want to configure settings in here so when you go to the ubuntu machine and click the network settings and you can see we can add four adapters here nat is default and we can add another internal network adapter specifically communicate between windows 10 and ubuntu this is inet i will leave it as inet because it's easy and that's it we'll say okay and start keep remember we have to configure the network settings in here as well but i i didn't do that at the moment but we'll do it later we'll let both to install and we'll see how we can go with this lab why i'm doing this from the scratch it's easy for everyone to get in the same page and build your lab from the scratch we'll wait and see i've got the um, ubuntu installation window i'm going to install ubuntu click continue uh, minimal installation i don't want much things here and i don't want to download updates because this this is for our lab we don't need much things here click continue even we don't need third party software graphic we'll wait and continue this process uh yes we would like to erase entire disk and install this now yes please continue in the meantime windows 10 also setting up so this is kind of time saving we can select any time you want just fine i will go with default um username will will give any username bob password also i'm going to give password because this is for our lab setup please keep remember your password if you're entering like complex password otherwise you will forget the password when you're doing the setup it's better if you can take the notes and keep the note in this side it it might helpful for you in feature when you use the same lab setup you can see the password you can reuse the vms likewise now we have to wait when this to finish i will come back until now i will give a quick pause for the video and let's meet once this to been installed all right both my ubuntu and windows 10 vmware app let's quickly set up those two i will start from windows 10 click yes it will take a bit time in ubuntu i'll skip this yes i'm going to skip this now we don't need to send anything and again move back to the windows 10 click yes i don't want any keyboard layout keep this one privacy we are done all right our ubuntu is ready maybe i will try to increase the display size if i could looks like no it's not possible that's fine where's the terminal it's here yep terminal we'll wait for windows 10 yep windows 10 also up i am going to click next or let's say domain doing instead who is this user at least password this is also password i'm going to use password again password right security questions i will do everything test test you can set up whatever you want but this is for demo we can add anything here we want doesn't matter don't don't worry about the content so it's fine click accept not now looks like we are done so in ubuntu i will increase this a little bit then you can see it better you can run sudo apt update as well as apt upgrade I i'm not going to do that because i think it does not require for this lab but let's see in ubuntu you can see there are two interfaces one is connected which means it is the nat connection and this one is not connected it is our internal lab connection if i can show you it here when you go to the network setting this is the one which is not connected yet and this is the one with the nat connection this is already connected this will communicate with the internet through my 
physical host and this is for our lab setup just to communicate with windows 10 and our ubuntu in windows 10 we have to set up this but until it's booting up we can connect this you can go to the settings and this is the adapter which is not connected you can go to settings again and we can select ipv4 and click manual we are going to assign an ip address to this one which ip we will use we'll use um 192.168.50.100 and net mask is 255.255.255.0 we don't need a gateway we don't need to set up dns all looks fine click apply it it will take a bit time and it will connect that's fine just ignore this warning and when you go to the terminal say if config or oh, it's not installed because i use the minimum installation you can use ipa and you can see in that adapter our ip has assigned in this one i'm going to increase the display size a little bit and you can see it better because i don't want to install the vmware sorry virtual box tools in here and when we go to this one if we go to the network settings you can see there's a only one adapter which is our nat adapter right only this one this is even not connected what we are going to do is we're going to shut down this is for a little bit and add that adapter and come back and do our lab we'll wait until it's shut down yes go to the virtual box manager click settings go to network adapter to enable and we are going to select internal adapter and inet this should has the same setting all right same one okay click ok click ok and we are going to start our windows 10 vm okay we can clear this window we need to have internet connection on both vms and we need to have the um, internal connection in between those two in order to communicate between those two what i'm going to do here is configure the telnet in the ubuntu machine and download and install the wireshark in windows 10 and then we are going to stay password okay here i'm going to oh, first we'll do the ip config then we'll do this one start without syncing data i don't need these ones close close this when you go to the network settings again you should be able to see two adapters here yes this is the usual adapter which we already connected to nat settings it's there and this is the one we want to have with the same ip range as ubuntu we did 192.168.50.100 we'll do this one go to properties click ip version 4 again properties 192.168.50.50.2550 and we don't need to have a gateway for this lab as well as the dns click close close and we'll try to ping to the ubuntu machine 192.168.50.100 and it's worked we'll try to do the other way as well 192.168.50.50 it's not pinging because of the um i think it's because of the firewall if i turn off the firewall in this vm he should able to ping i am guessing that firewall thing it this one uh public network that's fine we'll turn that off yes it's pinging now which is fine now all right now we do have connection in between these two now i'm going to download the wireshark to my windows 10 as well as the putty go to the edge and i will go to google i don't like ben so <laughs> yeah will download wireshark go to download and 64-bit installer and it will download in a second and again go to the google and download the putty download putty here i'm going to use portable version not the installer oh this is the msi installer i would like to use the portable one download it okay both are downloaded we'll set up those two install those two actually putty is don't want to install because it's a portable version yes i know don't it go ahead you can use the default setting which is fine and it will install this while it's installing this we can install telnet in here what i'm going to do is install telnet sudo apt install telnet d i guess password yes we want to install telnet in ubuntu telnet installed in the meantime we need to agree for this one if you want to verify you can do 
I think sudo tp kg minus l grab telnet d. Yes, that's the one. We can see the telnet being installed. Fine for us. Click next and finish the Wireshark setup. And let's see what we can do with this. And I will try to run the putty. Should be run. Yes, it's working. Minimize this. This is our putty. And Wireshark is installing. Click next and finish. All right. What we are going to do now is we are going to telnet from the Windows 10 PC to our Ubuntu machine. At the same time, we are going to capture the Wireshark packet capture and we are going to capture some TCP packets and go through that TCP packet and sniff the username and password. I think it's better before we continue, install the Oracle VirtualBox tool, then you can easily see the um, Wireshark captures. So what I'm going to do is install guest additional one. I'll pause video for a while. Once it's done, I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. We have now Wireshark here as well as the putty right in here we need to figure out which interface showing ethernet 2 um i'm not sure we'll we'll double check this one quickly yes ethernet 2 this is our ubuntu connection between ubuntu and this one i uh, will go ahead and select that connection right and i will open the putty what we are going to do is telnet from Windows 10 to Ubuntu VM. For that, we are going to use the putty. You need to enable the capture. We already selected the Ethernet to adapter. I will select the Telnet option in putty and add the 192.168.50.100, which is our Ubuntu VM IP. If you're not sure, you can go ahead and double check. It's there, 192.168.50.100. And we are going to Telnet to that IP and same time, capture the packet click open and it will give you the login prompt it's bob virtual box yes and i think it's bob and password is password i did a mistake password yes we are in we are in the ubuntu machine who am i yes bob let's say who am i bob we are in the machine ubuntu machine we'll stop the packet capture this is our main target main goal we'll stop the packet capture we can see the traffic tcp and telnet traffic over here we can filter the telnet traffic telnet enter you can see all the captured data in here we can see the tcp stream it is simple just right click any of this and click follow and tcp stream here you can see our login username as well as the password this is duplicated i don't know why but it should be bob not this double b double o and again double b but as you can see i did the who am i we can see that one as well which means telnet is fully playing text communication if someone sniffed the package they can see all the things in between that communication so this is po communication between our windows 10 vm as well as the ubuntu vm telnet is not secure this is a very good simple example to show this if someone asks why you should use ssh over the telnet so this is the example this is you can show them like this is the clue you can document this project you can add this into github your portfolio anywhere very simple and it's a good finding i think especially everyone which is new to the this world cyber security world and for the technical things i hope you guys learn something through this video video and if you want to connect with me you can join to the discord server if you have any questions feel free to do a comment in the comment section also i will write down everything in the description or the links you can download i think this is it hope you learned something and we'll catch up with the next video thank you guys